guys. Oh, <laughs> I had a bit of walk again. Uh, yeah, finishing this uh, woolly hammock uh, video off. Uh, quite a few of you guys out there actually waiting for it, asking when it's actually done and when it can be seen in action. So uh, I picked a quite, it's a cold, cold day actually, it doesn't look like it. It's beginning of December and uh, well it's about freezing uh, point around uh, in, in night time and it's about two or three degree today, uh, midday. So uh, it's a very dull day, as you can see. If I spin the camera a bit around, uh, yeah, this. it's a grey sky matching my outfit. Camouflage in the mist, sort of. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I packed my um, my uh, rucksack. As you can see, having a bit of rest on the bench. Um, got my wetter flag. I'm fully packed up. Uh, it's about 20 kilo. I put it on the scale last night with food and a bit of water. And um, yeah, to uh, as you can see, yeah, got my finger gloves. They're really there's a seal skin, seal skin. Yeah, the woolly one, the fluffy one, the merino wool. And they're coming in really handy. Anyway, um, I'm having a rest here on the bench because you see this wood down there or behind me. It's actually uh, just the edge of something overgrown. Um, and not that many people, hopefully, walking around. Um, well, the whole landscape is uh, agriculture, lots of open fields. Not much shelter along the ed uh, field edges, and um, it's very rarely that you find some uh, woods and uh, little bushes in the background. It's mainly because you can't get there with a the tractor, and it's um, yeah, a retreat for wildlife and uh, most probably um, uh, dog walking people prefer going in there, letting their dogs running free. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm uh, going in there as well today, trying to put my hammock up, which is uh, finished, sort of. Uh, well, the stitching is done. Uh, there's always room for improvements, like little loops along the edge at certain points, yeah, to attach an under blanket or something else, you know. And um, that's what I, oh, I forgot my tape measure because I haven't uh, done the mozzy net yet. It's no point starting the mozzy net in winter, but uh, by springtime I'm actually going to finish that off as another little side project. Um, and yes, uh, what am I going to say? Um, for now, I'm just trying out the hammock as it is, putting the uh, tarp up and eventually the plush palatka as an under blanket, yeah, uh, to take the chill out. Well, there's not much wind today and in, in the woods or in the bush, it's actually, uh, there's no wind at all, but it's uh, cold and uh, yeah, getting into the wrapping up, layering up issue Later on, uh, just put it as an introduction because it's winter time and the woolly stuff actually coming in to play as its best now. And uh, yeah, people turning up. <laughs> yeah, eaten through this pencil quite a lot. Uh, I've got almost. Well, it's only one half inch length left here, yeah, just a little bit, and uh, to mark the, uh, the lines up. But um, yeah, managed to get a few more of this uh, China graph. Actually, <laughs> I went to the local um, 
paper shop yeah where they're selling all the pencils and uh, paperwork and ask for china graph they uh, didn't know what a china graph is uh, yeah it's a chalk mark pencil yeah with white um, instead of uh, graphite um, it's just a chalk mark pencil but called china graph you get them in black as well yeah but um, well in Germany they don't know the term of china graph anyway I found some more of this this is a more chunky version of the one I already got but um, that will do the job once I done with that one yeah carry on stitching I'm uh, well on my way getting this uh, finished up yeah with all the stitching look at that it's actually uh, I calculated the length yeah and it's I did about 175 meter already just by going forward and backwards and across yeah and uh, I have to do another five lengths this way yeah across but um, I wanted to show you the final touch uh, seam along the edge yeah you may see this is the, the corner yeah and uh, I had the strengthening uh, length going here when this is folded up yeah but uh, to give the edge a certain uh, strength uh, every one of you probably know the sort of blanket stitch on the edge yeah and that's what I'm doing here that's uh, it's a very fine stitch and um, because it's uh, dynamia is very stable um, or very very tough material it will uh, prevent fraying the edges by being used yeah um, so it's just uh, to give it a final touch so that's what I'll show you now I hope you can see that in detail um, in a close-up what it is basically um, it's going folding the thread like that like in a loop and go let's see can you see that I'm going in here and leave the thread behind the needle yeah and then pull it through that actually creates a loop let's see a loop yeah and when I pull that it actually creates a line on right on the edge on top yeah so actually locking the uh, the loose um, edge off yeah and that works pretty well and but it's a very time intensive uh, jobby because it's uh, like uh, every two and a half three millimeter stitch so going in there and just with the thread behind the needle and just pull it through and there we go yeah to put that in detail you see this is the uh, the blanket stitch yeah it's a looped blanket stitch and gives the, the edge really a nice finish and um, stabilize it at the same time yeah so that's what I'm doing now as a final touch to it so as you can see I'm still on it getting all this nice uh, quilted sort of quilted uh, pattern to it and it's actually already about three foot in the middle yeah so it gives me plenty uh, area for stabilizing the uh, the hammock um, as you've seen in the previous video I was wobbling a bit on the um, on the hammock because it was only very narrow in the middle yeah I only had a few lines across it's like balancing on a slack line yeah 
So uh, the wider the line is, or the area is, the more it getting stable and doesn't wobble as much. Yeah, while on a small area you have to be right in the middle to prevent you from being tipped over. Yeah, so uh, that's why it took me quite a time, some time, to do all these lines. And every line is about uh, three and a half meter. Yeah, and obviously you have to go across. So in total there are 50 lines going across, yeah, and uh, it actually takes quite some time. That's why I couldn't post a lot of it. I wanted to spare you watching all the stitching because it's a boring job. And uh, But I'm getting there. It's almost done, yes. Uh, as you can see I only do the, the final touch for the uh, edge, yeah, and uh, as you can see it's a lot of lines going starting on in, in the uh, on, on the tip on the, on the corner yeah and then uh, widens towards the middle and then going narrow to the other end of the, to the next corner yeah so uh, yeah I'm not doing that again it's a one off and that's it I'm fed up with it almost but I finish that off and I'll show you how that works in action. Um, there's no way otherwise. Uh, I don't want to blame myself for being uh, giving up on a project. So once I started it and uh, yeah and um, reduce the amount of items for shelter gives multi shelter options to me like a uh, hammock, blanket, sleeping pad uh, in combination with the tarp and the plush palatka as an under blanket or small tarp depends on the situation yeah so basically having four items that's the hammock the tarp the plush palatka and the wetter flag which works as the over blanket yeah um, well, obviously the sleeping bag, depending on, yeah, but I don't need to have a hefty big uh, sleeping uh, bag. The ones I got will do nicely because the wool gives me a bit more insulation compared to the uh, nylon, yeah, just to make clear of that. Well, I carry on stitching. Finally, it's done. Um, well. It's just a quick overview of the whole thing here. I don't know if the light is uh, showing it in uh, all its glory. Uh, I got all this pattern here and it's actually across in the middle. It's about uh, 80 centimeter. Yeah. And uh, where it actually joins is 130. So generally I'm uh, sleeping then or laying across. Yeah and um, that should give me plenty space and um, yeah that was a long long job to do and uh, I'm not quite finished yet I still have to go all around the edge here yeah, to uh, lock the ends off and um, if that's done I'm hitting the woods for giving you a bit of uh, oversight of it and uh, yeah it didn't, didn't um, brought much weight into it because this dynamere is very lightweight and um, so it doesn't alter the weight in any way and um, yeah just on the washing line um, All this, uh, eh, can't see that. The, all the lines going across, and uh, so I can still use this, uh, presumably a hammock, blanket, and uh, sleeping pad. Yeah, by rolling it up, but well, not rolling it up, folding it up, and um, gives me plenty options and. Um, Ooh, another project done. 
almost, almost. I still have to go around the edge, yeah? So it takes me another day to do. And uh, But then, one more piece of the kit in my pack. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed so far. I, I know it's a long series of videos to watch, and uh, but it gives you an, um, an idea what I'm up to by uh, not using uh, industrial manufactured items but using natural materials and um, well advancing them in a way that gives well in this um, particular case the material got more strength more in, in the um, oh, what is it called the static the static is actually more uh, rigid now and um, yeah all these lines going across giving the whole thing the stability needed without you know like uh, giving too much tear on it and um, it's a bit an advantage I hope so yeah, yeah see all these lines going all the way down there and uh, disappearing into the center and then carries on to the other end and uh, the same going across like that and the other way down to the other end so that's what it looks like yeah the middle the center a bit to zoom in to the center yeah I'm gonna take this uh, thing out that's, that's what it looks like yeah all the woolly hammock all done yes <laughs> got my um, top set up blanket and hammock and a sleeping pad and the lot. It's all done. So this is the path going into the woods and I'm actually um, you can see all the greenery in the background. It's all a brumblebee, a brumblebee and um, well lots of thorns in it. So uh, this is uh, the overgrow of the um, yeah, sort of uh, what other people would uh, uh, declare as wasteland, but um, uh, I think, yeah, there should be more of it. Um, and in autumn, yeah, well, it's too late now, but uh, it would be it would be full of no blackberries, not blackberries, yeah, blackberries, aren't they? And. Uh, with all the brumble thorns, yeah. So uh, I can't pick any now, but I got some yummy in my back. Uh, as you can see, it's full up, and I've tried to find a quiet spot with some trees. It's a bit of youngish wood up there, and uh, by the look at it, some uh, oak trees as well. Uh, see the big ones, and. Uh, should be quiet place. Sword. This is a quite quiet area because you can tell uh, if you find these patches here. Actually, the deer footprints on top as well. And I found another few over there, and the leaf actually was stirred up. So this is a very good indication for uh, a place where there are no people with dogs walking along, because the deer feel. Uh, uh, safe for having a nap and uh, or for overnight here yeah. and uh, they still got uh, a good view uh, down this uh, hill it's a water stream in the background which is very convenient for the deer as well and uh, up there the walkway is actually behind a ridge so uh, people won't see what's going uh, going on down here and then so so you may 
spot the uh, footprint. It's actually right there. Yeah, the two there, and there's another one there. And up there, there are quite a few. And uh, it's a deer sleeping spot. And while walking along, it's actually another spot down here. Let's see. Uh, down there. Yeah. And uh, so there must have been quite a bunch. And there's another one down there and up there. And they're quite fresh actually. Uh, and it must have been from last night. Because they move around and every night they scratch the ground off the leaf. And um, well, they don't like ticks and <laughs> uh, creepy stuff. So they clear the ground underneath and roll up and having a nap. So, yeah. Let's uh, go down here. And yes, look, down there is this dark spot. That's another sleeping place for a deer. And uh, they obviously like this area. Uh, it's overgrown, fallen trees look, in the background. Fallen trees. And uh, oh, it's a youngish wood, but uh, near the water, they're actually uh, old trees and uh, all overgrown. And uh, looks like a good spot. Yeah, look at that. It's an old, old tree, it must have been come down uh, last year or so. And uh, I would like to put my hammock up here, underneath that tree. Uh, but maybe it's not quite suitable, so I have to build, watch around. I put my rucksack, hang it on the hook and uh, see where I can uh, find some suitable trees. And, uh, yeah, it was quite a good shelter. Uh, it's a very solid tree, it's an oak tree. Uh, and uh, because it came down uh, for some heavy wind and uh, the ground actually near the stream was very soft, so it couldn't resist. And uh, actually came down. Yeah, it's oak. Even the leaves are still sort of autumn colored. Yeah. It's actually the yellowish it came down in spring or I guess must have been spring. Find a suitable spot for hammocking but uh, actually because it's youngish wood and I see in the background is rows of trees yeah uh, they got the right size but they're too close together in <laughs> each direction. So uh, to find a sort of triangle uh, or just stick with the old oak, which uh, would do. It's not completely rotten. And uh, since there's still some uh, leaves on it, and uh, could put uh, a uh, Coming up here on the bigger branches and uh, making a sort of a low hanger. Uh, yeah, give it a go. Give it a go.
the first start preparation always takes a bit uh, longer so uh, because it's a very dry day and it's supposed to stay dry even if it's uh, overcasted very grayish but uh, it's no wind no rain forecast so uh, usually I would put the uh, the top up first but uh, to show you about the hammock uh, I start with the hammock first and put the tarp on later. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so again, I have to prepare actually the hammock. I haven't pre uh, set up the uh, whoopee sling. It's all in the back here. So I start with the tree hugger and uh, make myself a comfortable area to prepare the hammock with the end knots yeah so that will may take a bit but um yeah for now it's basically a blanket yeah sort of uh, which i can use either way but for setting up as a hammock i have to prepare the end sides yeah the diagonal ends uh to make it work as a hammock and uh, it's all in this bag yeah so Let's see. Here is the uh, hammock blanket. Yeah, it's still a small, well, fairly small pack. Yeah, and uh, well, this is just the back. So uh, it's just a piece of cloth. Yeah, uh, there was lots of stitching to do on that one as you may can see a lot the bushes here in the background right doing a bit of rump sack yeah the uh, hammock it's full so, I mean, it's not too cold now, yeah, but, I mean, I would just ask you, listen to the background noise, yeah? Which is just quite an important thing about this woolly stuff, while I'm actually handling that, yeah? You won't feel a lot of, uh, uh, or hear a lot of noise. And uh, see, blending in really nice. Yeah. So uh, even if I'm not having a camp up as like now, uh, I can still use it as a blanket to wrap myself up. Yeah, to keep warm. I mean, I'm quite warm because I got an Icelandic uh, sweater underneath. Yeah. What's it called? loop well it's coming from looping yeah uh, i can't remember this the swedish well norwegian uh, um i think it's lo loopy not loppy so loopy depending on the pronunciation uh, but it's coming from looping wool thread basically yeah that's what uh, i show you the icelandic i only have t-shirt merino t-shirt the icelandic sweater and the unlined, unpadded anorak. And I'm boiling, yeah? And we got sort of uh, one degree plus, uh, but there's no wind, yeah? So, uh, yeah, anyway, um, making use of the blanket, yeah? Wrap myself up, uh, stay warm around the fire, or if there is no fire, on the park bench, wrap myself up, keep warm. Additionally, to the wetter flag, yeah, which would be the preferred item for moving around and doing work at camp, yeah. So while the blanket, as you know, is a very useful uh, additional item uh, because it's much larger. Um, 
surface to make use of and that was uh, one purpose I wanted to carry a blanket but not the bulk of a traditional blanket yeah so I went for the uh, thinner material which is the same as the anorak yeah and uh, added a few more uh, well, quite a lot more of uh, the dynamo thread into it to uh, stabilize it to cope with higher weight like myself yeah so um, consider a uh, hundred kilo load and that's supposed to be not only for one night a normal blanket would do for one or two nights and then starts you know like stretching tearing and this dynamic actually doesn't stretch at all and uh, basically it's a net I'm using in the cloth yeah which actually gives me basically the hammock the hammock basically is the, the netting yeah and the gaps are filled with the blanket sort of yeah cloth woolly cloth so uh, but you know if I wave around it doesn't it's very silent and that's where the loden the woolly loden the Bavarian loden Alpine loading, yeah, the Austrian using as well, uh, coming in very handy, especially for watching wildlife. Obviously, <laughs> while I'm yakking around, there wouldn't be any wildlife around. Uh, but uh, for hunting and watching wildlife, this is perfect material, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's wool and it keeps you warm. <laughs> so, all right. I um, start folding the edges over so I can make uh, a knot for the hammock yeah, to, uh, to be able to hang it up. Alright, uh, try to do it hanging, well, I put the knot on while having the rucksack and all my gear hanging on the single hook here, yeah? uh, you can see that, that's the hook. And, um, because I don't want this on the ground so I start with one edge I got all my strings prepared now and uh, folding them up doesn't matter which corner I, I'm starting let's just make sure I got the right uh, corner opposite in diagonal fashion and uh, hand right. This in between. Basically, it's just uh, <coughs> wrapping it around here. Yeah. There's a tip, and uh, having this ears coming out like that. Yeah, and I'm gonna feed the whoopee sling in here. But uh, I may, yeah, I got the whoopee sling here, so I'm starting with the, with the loop thing. Yeah, this is short end, the short end of the whoopee sling. Feed that through both of this and pull the whoopee sling through. <laughs> and as usually, when it gets interesting, the battery runs out, so I have to swap the battery again. Uh, I got a few spares, so I hope that will do. So anyway, uh, got the uh, whoopee sling feed through the. So this is all it is. Yeah, but while there's coming tension on it, it actually the knot can't get undone anymore. Hope it's not 
slipping uh, while it's pulled tight. So um, while I'm here on this end, I start with the um, ridge line as well on one end here and feed that through the, the middle as well. And um, yeah, um, I have to go on top of the whole lot. So that means I got this eye here and I pull the whoopie sling through there as well. Yeah. And feed that loop right down to the above this knot here, yeah, this fold over and down here, see now it's still open and I'm just pulling the, the ridge line this gives me now another uh, tensioning ability for the non-slippy side. So this end is done. Um, turn it around and do that on the other side, yeah, on the hammock. So I got the hammock or the blanket, <laughs> the cloth rested on the in my rucksack here, yeah. Yeah. So just parking the whole lot on the rucksack as well. Hope I got the right side. And do my triangle trick. Got my endless loop here. Yeah. For that as neat as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect. And uh, fold them over. Hand width. Going underneath. Let's see. Find that gap. And pulling it. So that's it. Yeah. I got my tip here, the two ears. And the whoopie sling, feed that through both of them, pull the whoopie sling through, and there we go. So now, just park that up here, because I want the whole thing even, I need to find the opposite side yeah. Oops.
So I don't want that cloth being spun in uh, or twisted. So uh, I mean it's only depending on the circumstances. Obviously uh, it takes a bit effort. Uh, would be would make more sense to have all this uh, preset in a more convenient uh, environment but uh, I wanted to show you how to do the whole lot basically in the wild without the convenience of having a table and uh, plain surface at hand so yeah there we go right now I can go on putting the whole lot onto the tree hugger start on the opposite side yeah because it's framing the camera. Alright, yeah, basically the hammock is up and you have to adjust the tension of the ridge line and uh, loop this, uh, the ends out of the way and uh, give it a go. It's up now and uh, Just uh, give the whoopee sling another pull so it's nice and uh, uh, good tension on it. It's uh, fairly high up right now, but uh, once I'm sitting in it, it's gonna be. Uh, Well, when I'm sitting in it, it will sag it down, yeah? So, um, give it a go. Uh, 
I mean, the uh, setup, the anchor points, they're not quite leveled, yeah? One is uh, much far further up than the other one. But um, let's see. Um, comparing this uh, setup actually with a uh, standard hammock, yeah, which actually uh, uh, rubs around the two long ends, yeah, and then hold them together, so you actually get like a bathtub uh, shape. It doesn't uh, appear to happen with the diagonal up set up. It's uh, the tension is all in the center, yeah, along the, and um, it's quite hard to find a balance, uh, even if I got enough space. But it's uh, prone to tip over, so uh, either. I uh, tie the hammock up the classic way, yeah, like grab the long ends and uh, just make a, a bus top shape. Um, it's probably uh, more safer for sleeping all night than uh, trying to balance on the uh, diagonal. It's all right for having a, a rest and uh, for ooh, just relax a bit, but um, uh, yeah, practice is telling, isn't it? And um, it's a bit harder than I expected it would be. I mean, there's plenty material here which I can use to. Oh, but uh, rub myself up, yeah. The same on the foot end, yeah. Hope you can see that. I got, had to put my boots off because they're all muddy. <laughs> uh, but I think for safe overnight, the uh, classic long end uh, knot would be appropriate. I mean the material is still long enough with the three meter and uh, only for, I mean I would it would be easier if it would be three meter fifty or something but um, the um, DD hammock ultralight if you put that out flat on the ground it's actually I think was it two meter eighty or three meter, I think it's around that uh, measurements, and then got the ends folded over and put the, um, the rope through. 
Yeah, to castle the ends. Um, can still do that the same on this one without having a turnover on the long ends. Yeah, like a channel. Uh, I can still gather the lot together and make the same sort of knot I got here. Um, that will do. The main uh, reason for having this material and uh, this sort of hammock for me was to have a multi usable item like blanket sleeping pad and as a hammock yeah so uh, i know that the blanket and the sleeping pad uh, setup is easy it's just wrapping or folding the material up to certain shape squarish longish longish square shape and uh, that will do yeah um, as you would do with any other blanket but for the hammock setup um, well, <clears throat> the main step is, step is done, the major step is done uh, for the stability, yeah, so the uh, material doesn't crack with my weight, which is successful. I only have to work on how to actually, yeah, hang it up in a safe way so I'm not going to tip over, roll over at night and uh, drop on the floor especially if there is some muddy stuff and uh, uh, sticks and nettles and whatnot around um, yeah but test solved so far um, to give you yeah I'm gonna extend this video a little bit and put the hammock up uh, not the hammock, the, the, the tarp, yeah? I'm using the uh, plush palatka for that purpose now. So to give you a full view of uh, how it's supposed to look like when I'm camping out, yeah? So this is Sunday test, as usually. <laughs> and, uh, oh, and it's time for cooking, actually. Yeah, but I put the, hammer, the, the tarp up first and then uh, uh, do some cooking. Oh, it's hard work. Yes, guys. It's just for you, actually, for Maid Andy. My Maid Andy actually asked already when we get any more of these uh, hammock videos. Well, here it is. And, uh, yeah, give me a break. Yeah. Give you a close up of the uh, end knot. Yeah. While it's under full tension. There's my feet. It's a clean sock. Yeah. And uh, that's how it looks like. Okay. So that's how it looks like. And going up to the tree, which is there. <sighs> Quite exhausting, huh? It's all the setup, but uh, uh, just to give you uh, another view on uh, how it looks like. All blending in, and there's a knot going to the tree. Yeah. So, oh. I tell you, this is hard work, oh, but uh, I'm quite glad or happy with the result so far. It's about tweaking now, yeah? And um, oh, one word to the uh, regarding the mozzinet, yeah. Um, I'm gonna stitch up a custom-made mozzinet, uh, but uh, there's still time to do that. And it's uh, based basically on the same shape and design of the DD 
haben wir ähm, muss ich nicht, ja, yeah, the external one, the individual one, that goes with the ultralight hammock, ja, yeah, which is not fixed to the hammock itself, ja, yeah, so it can be used individually, even in the tent, ja, yeah, just by removing it from the hammock and, uh, because it's just sliding on to, uh, over the, uh, uh, the ridge line and the um, whoopee sling, and, uh, But the trouble is, uh, the DD hammock mozinet is not intended to be used with the ridge line, yeah? Because if you got the ridge line, it's there's much more space here. So the DD hammock is basically just meant to go uh, with the hammock, and uh, so there's, it's too short uh, for underneath, yeah? So. Uh, When you got the hammock on the side, it actually slips up and gives you a gap where the mozzies come in from the side. Uh, but only if you got a set up with a ridge line. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, but uh, in in Finland, but um, I had to make sure uh, I had the, the bungee cord just uh, the elastic cord just over the edge of the hammock, and uh, to have a close. Edge. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's something I can do in the winter time, just before spring, and make a special video just for that one, for the mozzy net. And uh, yeah, it's intended to be used then in the tarp tent setup as well. Yeah, because it hasn't got; it's very open, and uh, eventually uh, it would be smart to have a. Uh, Mosinet in the tent, top tent, top tent as well, yeah. Um, for my main top, I got the inner tent, which has uh, Mosinet built in, yeah. So it's uh, basically a Mosinet tent underneath the uh, Chum uh, Lavu type tent, which hanging up from the center, yeah. But uh, for a top tent setup, which is this uh, ant hill uh, shape, yeah, with a slope end. Um, yeah, I have to make something up. So, as you can see, there's quite a few uh, projects on the go. set up in the wild having the uh, plush paletka on top as the top and uh, nice cozy spot under that fallen tree yeah From the distance, doesn't look much different than uh, the branches that uh, drop down or hanging around. So color-wise, uh, for the untrained eye, wouldn't necessarily recognize this as a camp. Yeah, actually, from the distance, uh, it doesn't give you away at all. People wouldn't necessarily uh, spot that because it doesn't, this sort of setup does not uh, match any uh, classic camp tent shape like, you know, in a sub subconscious um, uh, way. People will not, well, they just, uh, the brain doesn't take notice of it, yeah, because it's just blending it in into the woods that well that uh, you're most likely going unnoticed by the typical average people walking around.
This is the campsite in the woods. Quite a nice spot. And uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. It's actually uh, something else I wanted to uh, get into. Um, and I mentioned um, uh, the woolly stuff and the woolly trousers in particular. And um, up till now, it was just not cold enough to make use of it. Um, I told you about my uh, Paul and Klosterhus hat, yeah, the woolly hat, the Loden hat. And uh, you see in the um, Hubertus Loden uh, anorak quite often, but you haven't seen the trousers yet. So um, this is a uh, heavy duty trousers from uh, Klosterhus, uh, Paul and Klosterhus, yeah, as well. The same who made this uh, hat. And uh, it's a full lined leg, yeah, fully uh, woolly. 100% wool outer loden like the hat and the um, uh, let's see if you can frame that. Um, see, it's the trousers going right down, and uh, yeah, you can tell it's a hunting trousers because it got this pocket for the knife. Yeah, so you can have that. On the belt and the pocket so it doesn't dangle about you got that actually secured in a special pocket that goes into the trousers yeah so while you're working and doing stuff your knife is in a safe place yeah not dangling around and you don't uh, get uh, you know and um, it's always at hand so um, uh, I'm not telling or oh, putting the trousers, I'll just give you a brief oversight. Typical hunting trousers, yeah, they are actually taller on the back, so your kidney area is a bit more covered, yeah, so while you're bending down and stuff, your, your ass doesn't hang out because um, it loops, goes up. Like the same with the um, anorak, yeah, it actually slopes down, so your back area is protected, more protected in both ways. One on the upper side, and this one goes up, yeah. Um, it's actually made for adding uh, suspensions, yeah, elastics or whatever, and uh, you don't necessarily need a belt. And uh, one it's if you're a bit like me, having a bit a flap, yeah. Uh, actually, this is made for the elderly hunters, yeah. Uh, so you got a very comfortable um, belly area, doesn't cut into your guts, yeah. The uh, area up here, yeah. So I've got nice pockets, yeah. Got uh, side pockets on both sides. And um, got pockets on the back, and something you may I put my ass into the camera now. You see this area here, the sitting area is actually doubled. There's double material in the sitting area and uh, between the legs. So um, when you're sitting down somewhere for a longer time, you actually got a bit of padding on your bum <laughs> as well. Um, for the, uh, the legs, they are actually really nicely made. Um, they're not the cheapest in the world, but uh, you only buy them once. And uh, when you take care about them, you're gonna enjoy them for quite a few years. And uh, yeah, I am not cold at all. It's actually really a nice feel to it. And um, because the legs, the, the lining in, on the legs, they are full lined, yeah, down to the to the ankles, so it doesn't itch either. And uh, another thing, the knee area is doubled as well and shaped. I don't know if I can. Um, 
or they're actually shaped. Uh, when you knee down, you actually got this pre-bent knee, yeah? Uh, so this uh, trousers just makes it perfectly for outdoor use, especially in colder uh, environment, winter and uh, autumn, yeah? And this is a perfect, uh, so even in snow, yeah? you were prepared and for the outer as i mentioned before i only got the, the woolly t-shirt and the uh, um, norwegian sweater yeah this is the original uh, no not norwegian the icelandic icelandic uh, sweater yeah it's without seams it's knitted in one piece yeah and uh, i don't take my um lupu off it's just uh, Going up here, got a nice neck and it's very soft, it's not itchy at all. And I got short, short uh, arm, uh, uh, the wool power undershirt, and, and they're not itchy on my uh, arms, even if I'm sort of not sweating. But you know, it's uh, yeah, it doesn't itch, they're really nice, and um, they're hand knitted, <laughs> made in. Island, yeah, where the women are knitting, tick, 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 and uh, they're not that expensive, but they're 100% wool. They're very quite lightweight, and um, uh, they're really warm. They're warm. They are, I mean, they're toasty, really toasty. So it um, doesn't need a lot of uh, kit, and you're still up in the woods, right? And now I'm doing some cooking. Actually, I got some uh, turkey to fry up uh, and having a cup of tea. With all this hassle, I didn't even have a cup of tea yet. So uh, don't blame me. Uh, it's all for you. And yeah, Andy, he asked for it. And uh, there's another guy from Wales. Uh, what was his name? Oh, oh sorry. I've, um, I'm not good in names. Um, so hello to everyone. And... Um, enjoy this uh, last uh, hammock video well it's not the last one but i have to tune it a bit and um, see how that's going on and i'm having lunch now <laughs> so. yeah, i'm not doing open fire here uh, there are too many, it's too f many people around. It's uh, Sunday lunchtime, people walking with their dogs, and uh, it's a sort of higher populated area. And uh, so I don't want to attract any attention because this is quite a nice spot actually. And, uh, Having a bit of special today. Start with the onion, but
haven't got any oil, but uh, I will do. Uh, should have made a stick. Oh, little bush rock fork. I've got a bush rock fork. Always nice to have a bit of tool around. Oh, it's nice to have a little bit of treat in the woods. Turkey and onions! I may uh, grab myself a stick for a little tool. <laughs> Let's try it and test it. Just do a stick. Flatten on both sides. Uh, and uh, create a sort of uh, fork at the end. Unfortunately, not much dry wood around, so
Well, it looks like the onion is <laughs> getting burnt black, but uh, well, they add to the taste, uh, to the flavor. And uh, yeah, I should have taken the oil, but I forgot that. Got a little steel bottle at home, especially for traveling. It's like the uh, alcohol shot, a uh, little pocket. Um, Bottle, yeah, but I'm using that for cooking oil, which is quite convenient size and uh, to pack and uh, to be used in the field. Uh, but I forgot to put that into. Uh, forgot to put that into uh, my pack in the morning. So, uh, but the titanium isn't too bad. You don't necessarily need uh, oil because it's a sort of non-stick and uh, yeah. look at that oh, 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 oh. Lunchtime, yeah. Fried chunk of turkey, yeah. I, for the moment, in the moment, I can get them fairly cheap, you know, like one half kilo in a pack, and there's portion that. And uh, because for, before Christmas, there are lots of turkey around, so it's not a full turkey. It's just the upper leg of a turkey, and uh, it doesn't need to cook very long. And uh, it's still juicy. Ah. Look at that. Uh, with the hobo, it's almost empty. Uh, with the alcohol. And uh, it's going to be yummy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's not fully cooked it's still a bit pink on each side but yeah. still tastes good yeah it smells a bit tastes a bit burnt in some parts because the onion but yeah. it's life look at that oh, nice chunk Mm. Really juicy. Mm. Yeah, I like a, a bit pink. Well, so on.
tell you what, this is quite a nice spot for further uh, videos. Um, because in this area, as I mentioned before, there are not many woods as such, yeah? Uh, because it's uh, the agriculture, everything that's flat, they're made up for the big machineries. And there's only a few um, corners left, you know, like it's a little wet meadow down there and uh, on a hillside. So where they leave it alone was just to plant some uh, young trees and uh, give the wildlife a bit uh, a retreat, yeah. And, uh, but uh, this is, this spot is actually in walking distance for about a mile from <laughs> where I live and um, all the other places either there are no trees or no woods at all or um, way far away and uh, because it's all fields yeah corn fields and uh, rub soil and all sorts and uh, I'm quite happy for this one mm, I'm gonna make use of that um, yeah, this fallen oak makes quite a good sheltering area. Uh, can hang up all sorts of stuff. And, uh, mm. So this alone is worthwhile having this trip out, even if the hammock isn't hundred percent. Um, as I expected it to be, but I'm mm, going to work on that. And then, yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah. And use the same spot for another go. Because there are no people walking around here. And uh, can have a bit of lunch. Oh no. Mm. And the onion. Ah, it's just burnt. Look at that. That adds to the flavor. Mm. Oh. Scrap that. Um, I hope this um, little update video of the last uh, hammock series was quite um, uh, well, was useful for you and um, show you a bit of a different aspect of the whole thing. And as you can see, it's a, this sort of project, stitching and stuff, even though it takes time, it's uh, a, pro well, a project in progress, yeah? Um, it's never really ending. It's just tweaking and tuning and... Uh, but um, I'm happy with the base. So, and the pack actually. And uh, it's not much heavier than... Uh, actually, it's the same weight than I had um, on the trip to Finland, yeah? I only left uh, two liter water off and a little bit food, but um, basically the overall weight is slightly less now than I had up to Finland. I throw a few bits out, yeah, but not a lot really, and uh, replaced obviously the ultralight hammock <coughs> with a woolly one, and uh, which goes up in weight, but then. Um, I don't know, I think there was some closing and stuff. I actually leveled it up or balanced it up basically, yeah. So um, it's a very comfortable weight uh, to carry. I was not overheating. Um, uh, I think I'm still, it's a still good setup, yeah. I got everything I need and um, ooh, no toys. <laughs> A few maybe, but um, overall, yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm wrapped up again and uh, ready to go. Leave no trace. And uh, but there's something I 
wanted to tell you I got another project on mind actually uh, had that on mind for quite a while as well a belt yeah a belt I got a nice buckle it's uh, you won't see that titanium pure titanium very lightweight um, yeah I bought that in China <laughs> yeah they're sending that from China and uh, so it's very lightweight very tough I thought well uh, because it's grey and uh, you know very lightweight and all my other kit is uh, titanium already so why not having a matching buckle yeah and uh, it's a uh, what was it uh, almost four centimeter width which match the belt for my trousers and it's actually gonna be uh, yeah a woolly uh, belt as well you may wonder about stability but uh, actually it's going to be only for the trousers to keep the trousers up and uh, going to be a money cat yeah I got uh, to stitch in some sliding stuff on the inside so uh, made from Tyvek waterproof yeah very lightweight and um, so that slides in t inside of the channel of the, the belt and uh, it's going to be my uh, traveling belt and um, yeah another project on the go so it's a never-ending story anyway um, so uh, yeah I make my home, uh, way home and uh, editing all this leaving this nice spot in the background yeah and uh, definitely coming back here and uh, well it's just the start of this uh, little wooden area it actually extends the other way getting very quite dense up there and um, so yeah see there's a meadow in the background down there in the valley and uh, so there's water around which makes quite a suitable spot for this sort of videos and um, very convenient it's not that far away so well keep uh, tuned there's more to come don't worry and uh, yeah, found my way home and uh, actually there's another sto um, thing on the way. I'm actually, it's about winter kit, yeah? Like uh, winter boots and uh, warm clothing, very, very warm clothing for very cold weather. And... Um, all woolly stuff, no padding, no, well, sort of woolly padding, but no artificial padding. And, um, uh, gloves, yes, gloves as well. So, uh, all sorts of different gloves that uh, make life easier. And uh, there's, there are quite a few uh, things I got on mind and uh, there's more to come so until springtime uh, i try to keep you covered <laughs> to entertain you with some um, stupidity uh, i'm putting up and uh, you may enjoy anyway okay see you later bye bye <laughs>